He fights for money, for honor, for child custody? There's more to the best movies of Jean-Claude Van Damme's career than you think. By 1993, Jean-Claude Van Damme was a bona fide action star. That was the year he starred in Nowhere to Run as dangerous anti-hero Sam Gillen. A hard luck small-time criminal, he's on a prison transfer bus when it crashes, allowing him to escape. He isn't about to go back to serving time behind bars, but he also has no interest in a life of crime. So he lives on the fringes of a small community before being discovered by a beautiful young woman named Clyde and her young children. When a group of corrupt land developers tries to push Clyde and her family off their land, Sam steps in and plays hero. Now at the center of a high-stakes tug-of-war with cops closing in, Sam has to stop pulling his punches if he's going to stay a free man and help his newfound friends. A breezy, heartfelt adventure, Nowhere to Run is just the right mix of action and drama. 2018's The Bouncer is a dark character study of a beleaguered man named Lucas who settles for a job as a strip club bouncer to support his young daughter after fleeing a murder charge and facing jail time. Filmed in Van Damme's native French, this thriller follows Lucas as he struggles to scrape by on the verge of poverty, torn between a life of crime and his duty as an informant. The Bouncer scored positive marks from critics who praised Van Damme's noirish turn in a dark, moody film that doesn't ask him to wink to the camera. French director Julien Leclerc was able to get a compelling performance out of a star whose late career has mostly been marked by direct-to-video duds. In 1991, Jean-Claude Van Damme and director Sheldon Lettich reunited for twice the action in Double Impact. Van Damme stars as a pair of twin brothers, Chad and Alex, separated as infants when their wealthy parents were gunned down in a vicious attack by hitmen in Hong Kong in the 1960s. Chad is taken by the family bodyguard, while Alex is left at an orphanage in China by their loyal maid. Cut ahead to 1991 when Chad is lured to Hong Kong, where he meets Alex, who has reunited them to get revenge on the man who killed their parents and get their hands on their share of their inheritance. But their plan puts them in the path of dangerous gangsters, drug lords, and violent assassins. I believe this. My brother. Double Impact gives Van Damme the opportunity to punch out, take down, and kick butt twice as hard. The reviews, however, were half as kind, with few critics anticipating the action classic this would become. At least Roger Ebert, in a shrugging two-star review, noted the film's high production values and exotic setting, as he also declared, Van Damme seems thoroughly comfortable with his feet above his head, a position many martial arts experts often find themselves in. The 1994 sci-fi action adventure Time Cop threw Van Damme into the future world of 2004, where time travel has become a reality. Unfortunately, criminals have begun using it to alter the past, forcing the creation of the Time Enforcement Commission, tasked with traveling back in time and catching future criminals. Van Damme stars as Max Walker and appears in two time periods as a police officer in 1994 and a TEC agent in 2004. In 1994, Walker is the target of mysterious assassins in a deadly bombing that leaves his wife dead. A decade later, he learns that a powerful senator is using time travel as a part of a conspiracy to attain power. It's up to Walker alone to set things right. But he's also given the chance to save his wife, even if it means potential consequences for the future. A thrilling joyride, Time Cop is a deft mix of patented Van Damme action and mind-bending plotting. It was the biggest hit of his heyday, grossing $102 million worldwide. It wasn't exactly well-reviewed at the time, but over the years, it's become a sci-fi cult classic, spawning a TV spin-off and a 2003 direct-to-DVD sequel. Universal Soldier likely had little ambition to become a classic when it was released in 1992. It was hardly a big-money blockbuster, but with Van Damme and co-star Dolph Lundgren, it had a pair of action stars to fill out its compelling high-concept premise. During the Vietnam War, U.S. Army soldier Luke Devereaux discovers that one of his comrades, Sergeant Andrew Scott, has been brutalizing innocent civilians. They're both killed in a deadly confrontation, only to be resurrected decades later in a secret government project called the Universal Soldier Program. With cybernetic implants and bio-modifications, they become unstoppable mindless killing machines. An all-time sci-fi cult classic, despite its less-than-stellar initial reception, Universal Soldier kicked off a multi-part saga, including numerous sequels as well as a line of comic books, video games, and more. I just want to eat. In 2010, Sylvester Stallone assembled a team of veteran action heroes to create The Expendables, an over-the-top action flick unlike any other. 
It starts Stallone alongside the likes of Jason Statham, Jet Li, Terry Crews, and Dolph Lundgren. 2012's Expendables 2 added the biggest missing piece from its predecessor, the muscles from Brussels himself. In the film, the titular team of veteran mercenaries go up against Van Damme as the movie's main villain, the suitably named Jean Valan, who leads his own gang of rival mercenaries called the Sangs. They're both after the same thing, a computer data bank that holds the location of five tons of enriched plutonium left over after the Cold War by the Soviet Union. Van Damme goes to extraordinary scenery-chewing heights here, including one scene where he kicks a Bowie knife into Liam Hemsworth's chest. The film actually received decent reviews and became the highest-grossing non-animated film of Van Damme's career. Sudden Death was released in 1995 at the peak of Van Damme's star power. He takes on the role of Darren McCord, a French-Canadian firefighter serving in Pittsburgh. But after failing to save a family from a house fire, he's been relegated to a security job at the local sports stadium. During the NHL Stanley Cup Finals, with the Pittsburgh Penguins squaring off against the Chicago Blackhawks, terrorists seize control of the arena. With the vice president in attendance, the terrorists take a number of high-profile hostages and threaten to blow up the arena that they've wired with powerful explosives. It now rests on the shoulders of the downtrodden McCord to stop a madman and save the vice president. This is the most powerful plastic explosive in the world. Sudden Death got mixed reviews, but won over plenty of fans, including a rave from the Los Angeles Times. It also features the best Van Damme fight ever, in which he battles a penguin mascot to the death and utterly destroys a kitchen. The first American film for Hong Kong director John Woo, the guns blazing action flick Hard Target, is definitely a favorite for many a Jean-Claude Van Damme fan. In this outing, he plays Chance Boudreau, a homeless former Marine in New Orleans. After saving a young woman named Natasha from a group of muggers on the street, he's hired to be her protection on a mission to locate her missing father, a Vietnam veteran who's been living on the streets. As the investigation unfolds, they uncover a scheme run by a group of sinister tycoons who have been hunting the homeless for sport and who set Natasha and Chance as their next targets. Reviews at the time were mixed, but the film is packed with arguably the best action of any of Van Damme's films thanks to Wu's characteristically over-the-top touch. Nowadays, Hard Target is seen as a landmark in the history of the genre, thanks in particular to Van Damme pulling off some amazing stunts, like standing on a motorcycle while firing a gun at an oncoming vehicle. I've been looking all over for you. You've been looking in the wrong places. 1990's Lionheart sees Van Damme competing in street-level tournaments in the inner city. He stars as Leon Gaultier, whose fighting nickname is Lionheart. To earn money to travel westward and see his brother, he enters an illegal underground street fight, joining a fledgling circuit of champions that caters to the wealthiest spectators. Like his 1980s output, Lionheart wasn't exactly well received by critics, but the film gives Van Damme some real drama to chew on, as well as some of the best action of his early career. As Brian Orndorff of Blu-ray.com noted, the fight scenes are the highlights of Lionheart, allowing Van Damme to do what he does best, trying to make believe that his opponents have a shot at dropping Leon to his knees. A year after 1988's Bloodsport made him a martial arts star, Van Damme returned to the ring for Kickboxer, another no-holds-barred tournament fighter film. His unrelenting on-screen fights are kicked up a notch, and the film boasts an even more powerful personal story. Van Damme plays Kurt Sloan, fighting assistant to his brother Eric, the American kickboxing world champion. Having conquered the American circuit more than once, Eric has grown bored and heads to Thailand to compete against a more brutal breed of competitors. He's set to face off against the vicious Tong Po, a massive mountain of a man who's merciless in the ring. Against Kurt's objections, Eric fights the unstoppable Po and is so savagely beaten that he's left paralyzed. Desperate for vengeance, Kurt finds a wise Muay Thai master who trains him in the art of kickboxing and sends him on a quest to defeat Tong Po. The film's blood-soaked climactic final match is one for the ages. It also spawned a series of sequels, though Van Damme wouldn't return until the franchise was rebooted with kickboxer Vengeance in 2016. And of course, we can't forget that iconic dance scene. Are you still, can you still dance like that? You still got those dance moves? I still get the move. The movie that made Jean-Claude Van Damme a star, Bloodsport, followed in the footsteps of fighting films like Rocky and The Karate Kid. But Bloodsport featured a more intense and more graphic form of fighting as Van Damme got the chance to truly show off what a talent he was on screen. Admittedly, the plot is rife with cliches, but that doesn't matter when our leading man is in peak physical form. 
Inspired by a supposedly true story that wound up being completely phony, the film stars Van Damme as Frank Dukes, an American army captain who competes in the Kumite, a brutally violent Hong Kong fighting tournament. He makes an enemy in the form of Kumite champion Chong Li, whom he'll have to defeat to win it all. Bloodsport was an instant hit, and it remains a top dog in the Van Damme canon. Unlike any film that he's made before or since, the crime drama JCVD brought serious self-awareness as Van Damme turned to more serious fare. The year was 2008 and he was nearly a decade removed from headlining a major Hollywood film, having starred in a series of direct-to-DVD B-movies since then. But he still had a lot left in the tank, and so he delivered a powerful performance that earned him rave reviews as an exaggerated, downtrodden version of himself. The plot finds Van Damme struggling to find any work at all, let alone the kinds of action roles from his glory days. On top of that, after a bitter court battle, he loses custody of his daughter. Just as he's reached wit's end, he gets entangled in a bank robbery gone wrong, with police believing him to be one of the thieves. While at first it's a case of mistaken identity, Van Damme seizes on the opportunity to get money for himself. As the media gets wind that the Hollywood hero has turned crook, the situation quickly escalates. Giving the action star's career an existential kick, with a nearly seven-minute monologue about his public image, JCVD serves as a reminder of the power that one's own legacy can hold. Stupid to kill people. They're so beautiful. So today I pray to God 